Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff from the Cyber Pro Podcast. We are back today with from the UK. Actually, I'm not, but my guest is. But I'll pretend like I am because God, I'd wish I'd be anywhere else in the world today now that we can actually travel. So with that, my guest, Simon, good morning. Please tell good us morning. a little bit. Oh, well, good evening. Good evening for me, but good morning for you. Yes, then we're, we're definitely going to go have some tea after this. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, my name is Simon Linstead. By day, I'm the Global Head of Business Innovation for a UK expert secure by design consultancy business called Bramfit Technology Labs. Uh, my job basically is to help them bring their product to market, mostly in the US, so you'll be seeing me over there soon. But by evening and by other spare time, and last year I founded a independent community for cybersecurity professionals called InfoSec Live, which has grown to just under 3,000 people in the last 11 months. And I, I think it's the first dedicated um, social media platform for the cybersecurity industry. So as a current C-suite executive and entrepreneur, tell us what you've uncovered as being the most fascinating aspect of where you are today in the short time that you've been here. Oh, that's a, that's a very open question, Jeff. Uh, and I want to try and keep it succinct because I know we've only got, we've only got a few minutes. Um, for those that haven't seen me speak or, or met me before, I've only been, whilst I am no spring chicken, as we say here in the UK, I'm 47 years old, father of six amazing children. Um, I've only been in the industry working for the last 13 months, um, studying only for the last two and a half years in total. So I suppose the thing I want to talk about today is how much you can bring your experience from other careers, whether it's military transitioning, whether it's financial services, which I spent 22, 23 years in, how much relevance and how much you can bring across to benefit the cyber industry or the infosec industry. And the misconception I've seen over the past kind of 13, 14 months has been, no matter where you are in your life journey, if you wanna get into cybersecurity at any point, you have to come in at entry level. And I suppose I wanna dispel that myth because I came in, my first job in this industry was the head of global sales for a UK-based penetration testing firm last year. So it's definitely possible is the most important message I want to get across. And going back to what you said, Jeff, the importance of embracing all of our differences and working together globally, that's the only way we're ever going to make any headway. Embracing our differences, but also respecting the experiences and the, I guess, education would be a good word that preceded it and bringing those strengths to a new battlefield. Absolutely. When you talk about things like that, um, you know, we talk about the importance of having the EQ or other soft skills from previous experiences and life. Uh, Do you know, it's the, the fact you say that, Jeff, it's, you know, I kind of flippantly said at the start last year, I founded the InfoSec community that there was a reason for that. And what I've kind of brought to the table, in my humble opinion, to this industry is 30 years of sales, communication, negotiation, relationship management, business development kind of skills, I suppose, in innovation in a way as well. And I never would have thought at the start of my journey, I wanted to be a pen tester. So I went from being kind of degree, degree qualified financial planner with his own business to wanting to come in and be a pen tester. But after doing that for a year, failing my OSCP and realizing that really the fact I've got ADHD as well and I can't sit still for more than 10 minutes, it was probably never the right job for me anyway. And I think the biggest learning curve for me out of this whole journey into the industry is I came into it wanting to do something different because I've always loved technology. And I think we'll touch on that. A bit a bit later on but I've ended up doing what I've always done but I've ended up doing what I've always done in isolation so from being a business owner where you have to do everything the bit I've always enjoyed is the people the people aspect and when you are a business owner you lose that to a certain extent because you have all the other stuff to deal with so now I'm working with a firm of up nearly 50 you know global professionals it's amazing because I can focus on what I'm good at and then when I get asked a technical question, I've actually got someone who knows the answer, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes, we know about the multiple hats that we work as entrepreneurs and uh, business owners. And so uh, d digging a little bit into that, you know, uh, we talk about the EQ and other soft skills and the fact that before we started filming, we made mention that, you know, all the bad guys, the threat actors who are out there who are trying to penetrate whatever we're trying to protect are still and will continue to be humans. And yeah. having the ability to get into their mind and their motivation as to what they're doing will help us protect what we're protecting. And my final comment before I pass the ball back to you was, you said, hey, being a financial planner for the past couple decades, you know, we can see the signs that there's a, a, a good argument to be made that we are going to be heading into a down cycle. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long it's going to last. Hopefully not going to be too bad. But all of a sudden, because we're in that down cycle and you have all these bad guys who are out there and in the good times, it's good times, but in the bad times, it's not. No. And now they're going to be Maslovianly. Love that word. They're going to be driven by the, driven. the hierarchy of needs you're talking about, which right. is, you know, if, if you can't put a roof over your family's head or feed them. I've got six children. I'd pretty much do anything to make sure my children were safe. And thank thank God or Allah or whoever it is, I've never had to do that because I live in a country where, you know, you end up bankrupt and on the streets, you do get assistance, you do get help. As tough as it is, we do get help in our country. And we're very, very fortunate for that. Unfortunately, most people in the UK and other developed nations aren't appreciative of that whatsoever. But, especially no. if you're that, especially if you're that kid who lives in Turkey. And you don't yeah. have that. And all I've got, sudden, you know, I've, I've got contacts in the InfoSec Live community. So some of the most talented pen testers I know are one of them's uh, a Syrian refugee, uh, Mohammed, who now lives in Turkey, and he's gifted. But can he get any work? No, because yeah. of, of where he lives. And I've got Zablon, uh, who's Ethiopian lad. He's twenty years old. He's inspired me more than any person I've ever met with his dedication and determination. Again. He's been banging his head against a brick wall for now 18 months because of where he lives. And as much as the world is a smaller place, unfortunately, it isn't when it comes to this industry and getting work. And I think that needs to be addressed as well. And it's a smaller place, but there are doors. And sometimes there those doors. Big heavy metal ones. Yeah, with big locks on. Yeah. yeah. So when you talk about these gentlemen that you know, and they're in parts of the world that, you know, aren't in downtown London and they're forced with putting a roof over their heads. Now, all of a sudden they question what it is they're, they're going to do. And if what they do is good, but they can also do better by not doing good. And the problem is Jeff, it's without wanting to condone it. It isn't like robbing an old lady in the street from a, I suppose, one, what you have to do, and two, you're not seeing the the kind of damage that you're doing that you would be from a street robbery, perhaps, which would take a certain kind of criminal. You know, you'd need to be pretty desperate to go out on the street and do that. Wherever, where else, where, you know, running a couple of scripts, finding some vulnerabilities and sending off a few emails isn't really, doesn't seem that bad, does it? But we know it is. <laughs> and in many cases, worse. So having yeah. those... Yeah, and having those soft skills, having that EQ, we're going to be able to do a better job at protecting what we're doing. And that's the importance of what you're doing and the importance of communities like InfoSec Live. So thank you for that, number one. And number two, we're going to run out of time. So quickly, I'm going to say, for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more about you, Simon, perhaps about BramFit or InfoSec Live, what is the best way to get a hold of you? For me, um, considering I've never been on social media until the last year, because I've got a bit of an issue with it, which is ironic, I end up in cybersecurity. It is related. Um, LinkedIn is the only social media platform that I'm on. Um, it's probably the easiest one to reach me. I'm open to connections all the time. So thank you very much for asking. And please do connect. Awesome. I'm going to end with a happy question, because otherwise we're going to go down this hole and who knows how we're going to find our way out. So question number five, tell us a little bit about something or an event previously in your life that, you know what, brings a smile to your face that, that you've learned from. Well, 
Do you know, I'm not going to give you the insightful comment you want here. Um, I'm going to go for a different one because I kind of prepared for this one a little bit. And the thing that brings a smile to my face and one of the main drivers for me ending up in this industry was technology in general. And that was all that the kind of my interest was piqued as an eight year old when I received my Christmas present. And that was a ZX81 Spectrum, which allowed me to play this game. If I can get out of the way, you can see it. <laughs> which is Jet Set Willy. And I've still got a kind of mirrored version on my phone that I play now. So yeah, that that is the thing that still makes me smile today. Brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. Simon, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. And we wish you well. It's an absolute pleasure, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. And I hope we can catch up again soon. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching the Cyber Pro Podcast today. You can find more content here and here and there.